Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you are considering dental implants. If you are missing one tooth or if you have a loose fitting denture, my advice, stick around for the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. The Wellness Hour, an in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. My first guest is Dr. David Scharf. We've invited Dr. Scharf on the program today to discuss who's a candidate for dental implants. Dr. Scharf, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, now, before we get into today's topic, uh, tell us a little bit about your practice. Well, I'm a periodontist. I practice in Babylon, New York, and the focus of my practice is uh, treating gum disease and placing dental implants. Periodontist. What is a periodontist? Well, a periodontist is a dentist uh, who's gone to dental school for four years and then goes on an additional two or three years to specialize in the areas of uh, placing dental implants and treating gum disease. Okay, dental implants. Mm -hmm. You're a professor at the university. Uh, Tell yes. us about that. Well, uh, one day a week I teach at New York University. I'm a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Implant Dentistry. And my role in that department is uh, I train other dental specialists who want to learn how to place dental implants. Anticipating this interview, it seems, you know, when I think of dental implants, it seems like it, it, in the world of dental specialties, it seems like a, a very straightforward procedure. I mean, can it be tricky? Is there a lot to it? You know, you're right. From the outside, it would seem like it's pretty straightforward. But really, it's very involved to get a good result. It starts with proper diagnosis, examining the patient, understanding what their needs are, evaluating the bone very carefully, uh, evaluating it clinically as, as well as with x-rays, and then coming up with various treatment plans, presenting those to the patient. And then surgically itself can be very demanding in terms of placing the implants properly, angling them properly, making sure the bone is right. Many times we can uh, build bone if someone needs more bone. And then finally the restoration, making sure the crowns or restorations are placed properly. Now dental implants have become pretty popular. Is that right? Oh, yeah, they've become mainstream for sure. Are they the gold standard? I mean, somebody's missing a tooth. Are they supposed to be told by their dentist as far as options, dental implants? Well, certainly dental implants have become the number one option for many patients and many restorative dentists. Uh, and the reason for that really is their predictability and their durability long term. Uh, conventional tooth supported dentistry, whether it's a removable partial denture or a cemented bridge, has a limited lifespan and tends to injure whatever it's attached to. The beauty of dental implants is uh, it doesn't injure the adjacent teeth, it doesn't get tooth decay, it doesn't get gum disease, so there's nothing more durable than a dental implant. And now that we have this modality to use, it's hard to go back to the old way and use modalities that after 5 or 10 or 15 years we'd see they would just fail and have to be redone. In fact, a lot of dental implant patients we see have been through this cycle of what we call re-restoration. Maybe they had a crown when they were in their 20s, and then in their 30s they got decay under the crown, and then they needed a bridge. And then in their 40s they got decay under the bridge, and now they need a larger bridge. And it all started with one tooth that was restored in a way that compromised the adjacent teeth. So now we know better and we have better techniques. But it's still being done today. Oh, the sure. other way, you know, traditional dentistry addresses the one tooth. Do you, do you believe that this is the future of dentistry? I mean, someday, if you're missing one tooth, they put in a dental implant every well, time. Well, that day is here, and I always like to make an analogy with my patients. Imagine if you lost a finger, and the surgeon said to you, I can give you two options. I can jury rig a finger that's attached to your two adjacent fingers, but they'll never quite be the same, or I could just give you back a new finger that will look, feel, and function just like your original finger did. You would never think to attach it to the adjacent fingers. So is it like just getting your tooth back? It's exactly like getting your tooth back, only it's really better because a dental implant doesn't get decay and doesn't get gum disease, but they feel like natural teeth, they function like natural teeth, and they look like natural teeth. How long teeth. have they been around? Well, the research on dental implants began in the 50s uh, on animals. It began in the 60s on humans, and then they followed these patients for 20 years before bringing this technology of dental implants to North America. So really in the mid-80s is when this re research was pre presented. And when you think about that, it's outstanding. Nowhere else in medicine do I know that they follow patients for 20 years before saying this is safe, this is effective. So they don't fall out. One of the things, anticipating this interview, talking to someone <laughs> who was a medical doctor, not a dentist, but he said, you know, I think they fall out. That's the problem with dental implants. Is that just not true? Not that's, the case? that's not true. You know, before osseo integration and the type of implant we have now uh, was developed, the old type of implants used to fall out, blade implants or subperiosteal implants. But these new type of implants we use, they are actually fused to bone, and once they fuse, they don't fall out. What's changed in the world of dental implants? <laughs> what hasn't changed in the world okay. of dental implants? I've been doing implants uh, over 20 years now, and when I think back to how it used to be, uh, not very much is uh, the same. First, 
diagnostics have improved dramatically. So early on in dental implants, we would take a two-dimensional x-ray, we would do our surgery, sometimes there would be enough bone, sometimes there wouldn't. Sometimes the, there would be enough bone, but it would be of poor quality. You said it was a blind procedure. What does that mean? Well, we didn't have uh, all the diagnostic information going into the case that we do now. Nowadays, we take a three-dimensional x-ray called a dentist scan, which is like a medical CAT scan, and that shows us in three dimensions how much bone someone has. It also shows us how dense the bone is. To give an example, 15 or 20 years ago, we would send someone out for a medical CAT scan. It was very expensive to do. It had a, a pretty significant radiation dose, the equivalent of maybe 60 to 80 days of background radiation. Now we have a machine in the office called an iCAT, which gives us a three-dimensional x-ray. So it's in your office? In our office. So it's not a separate trip to the radiologist. It's much less expensive. And the radiation dose is uh, one-tenth of what it would be with a medical scanner. Who's the typical patient, dental implant patient, that you see in your practice? Um, you know, there are different types of patients. Uh, one patient, I think, is the denture patient, who's someone who's wearing a denture, has been in a denture a long time, and hates their denture. It's loose, it moves around, it falls out, and they want that denture to be secured in some way. <clears throat> the second type of patient, I think, is the denture patient who comes in who wants to be rid of their denture. Having that thing come in and out makes them feel old, it, it saps their vitality, it saps their confidence. They've maybe heard about dental implants, and they want to be able to replace their teeth, get rid of the denture, so maybe their palate is open and things don't come in and out. Another patient is sort of the pre-denture patient. This is someone who maybe hasn't been involved in dentistry for a while, where their teeth are at the point where the dentist says, you know, your teeth, you, you need a denture. I know someone like that. They say your teeth have to go. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, what more devastating uh, uh, information could a patient get. I want to tell you a fast story. It's a true story. I have a patient who unfortunately had lost her teeth. She had dentures and she also had had breast cancer. She had a double mastectomy. And after her case was finished and we were talking, she said to me that losing her teeth was more traumatic than having had the mastectomy. Uh, and that putting those teeth back with dental implants, it was like having her old teeth back Sounds again. Sounds like an exaggeration though. You, you know, you would think so, but I think having not gone through that, we can't appreciate what it's like. I've had old patients, young patients, people of all ages um, who lose their teeth, and I think they lose much more than their teeth. They lose their self-confidence. Interesting. Um, uh, I think not having experienced it personally, it's hard to relate to sometimes. Now, what about people that, you know, my mother, she's 72 years old, pretty healthy, lost her teeth when she was about 28, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. She says, and, and she knows I'm interviewing you today, and uh, she says, I'm too old for mm -hmm. dental implants. And you told me on the phone, that's not the case. That's not the case at all. You know, the oldest dental, dental implant patient I ever treated was 91. Um, and as long as you're... Why would a 91-year-old, though, want a dental implant? I mean, at that stage of the game. Well, you know what? Um, I once had a patient say to me, uh, she came for a consultation. She was in her late 80s, and she came with her granddaughter, who was in her 30s. And the granddaughter said, Grandma, why do you want to do this? And uh, the grandmother said, I'm not done chewing my food, living my life, having a good time. So I think we take for granted when people lose their teeth, they lose their ability to enjoy food. And really, you know, you can lose your eyesight as you get older, you can lose your mobility, you can even lose some of your faculties. But the ability to chew and enjoy food is such a basic part of who we are uh, that